Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Today's topic we're gonna uh, is about life's moments are not horizontal; they're vertical. I will get into this uh, in details later. For now, as usual, we're going to be doing our meditation. We're going to do a silent meditation. Uh, what I'm asking you to do is simply bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. Take your attention in that direction. Where do your thoughts originate? What's there before you think? Before any thoughts do come, arise, what's there? What's in the back? What's before thoughts? So if you simply divert your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts and follow your thoughts all the way back and see where it leads you to. And just as you're doing this, sink back, relax into yourself. And embrace this moment without any stories, regardless of what your mind says, what kind of thoughts will arise. Some of you may have a busy mind, okay, and your mind is going all, all over the place. It's fine. Don't struggle to stop your mind. That doesn't work. Simply bring your attention inwards towards yourself, towards the witness, the one that is aware of the thoughts. Who is watching the thoughts? And bring your attention in that direction. Okay. Just take your attention inwards. Just be quiet. Sink inside. Just simply keep your attention on one point within yourself. simply relax into your state of being, your natural state of being. 
your natural state of being is silence, peace, quiet, balance, equilibrium. That's the true nature of your being. Everything else is a product and an expression of thoughts and emotions that happen on consciousness. They're not who you are. They simply arising on consciousness. Just stay in your silence. Be quiet. Be yourself. Just know that peace is your true nature. Peace, tranquility, it's who you are. That's your true nature. And as you're in this relaxed mode, you're sinking into your very being, which simply is, is here, and it doesn't have an agenda. It's not trying to prove, prove anything to anybody. Your being simply exercises its natural state, the I am, the presence. That's the nature of your being, an eternal presence, always here, formless, limitless, timeless. simply being present presence simply being here right now in this moment without an agenda without trying to get to anywhere. You are only here. Stay here. Right now, in this moment.
And as you're hanging out here, if you put your hands on your chest area, on your heart area, and repeat after me. And before we do this, I'm going to ask you to simply put your self-judgment away and put your story away in this moment. You can just take take your story and your self-judgment and put it in a plastic garbage bag and put the garbage bag down put it away so now you have no story and no self-judgment and simply repeat after me in this moment I ask you to be sincere in this exercise really mean it when you say repeat after me really mean it in this moment I love myself I love myself I love everybody I forgive myself I forgive everybody because I'm love because I'm light because I'm God that's why I love myself and I forgive myself I say yes to love yes to love yes 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 and as you are in this state just be open open the curtains and the windows of your heart to the light to the divine presence let God light love penetrate your heart your being Let love takes over. Let go of your control, imaginary control. And Allah, love and light guide you, guide you home. Allow love and light to take over your life. Put the mind away. Your self-judgment is in the mind. It's a thought. Your lack of self-love is another thought. Or it's an emotion. Put these things away and simply see who you are. Who you are is complete. And it is the source of love. So allow yourself to flourish, allow yourself to shine by removing your mental obstacles and love yourself in this moment. Simply love yourself for being here for having the courage to show up to having the courage to show up in this life to live this life to accept the challenges of this life and to incarnate in a human body that's a big accomplishment
slowly, slowly come back here, go through the transition of being expanded and one in with the universe. Now your consciousness is shifting. You're consciously bringing your attention into an individual being from expanding into disillusion into the oneness. Now you're shifting your awareness into being a human being. Slowly, slowly come back here. So you're doing this shift consciously. You're consciously, you're training yourself to shift your attention into the one-pointedness within yourself and then immediately everything becomes quiet because as if you get focused on the witness inside yourself, the watcher within yourself, the one who's watching like this. Oh. So you bring your attention to the watcher and you go to the source of your thoughts and then everything becomes quiet, everything is flat and then all of a sudden you feel the bliss, the heart opens and you feel the love. Then at the end of your meditation you're consciously shifting your attention and you're bringing your attention to the other world. So when you do this practice, you're learning, you're training yourself how you can go into deep silence and how you can come out from a deep silence to get engaged with the other world, the world outside of yourself. Because it's important to learn and train ourselves to have one foot in the inner world and one foot in the other world and learn how to go through the shift learning the pathway between silence and how to come and operate in the world from silence so when you do this work slowly slowly gradually it gets ingrained in your being and you learn how to do it during the day in ordinary life when we're not sitting together meditating you learn how to do this because we keep practicing it together so you can bring your meditation you can bring silence stillness into your everyday living Now, I'd like to talk to you about life's moments. Most people believe that life and it's our experience and it's our perception, which is completely, it's an optical illusion. It's not real. It's completely false. But it appears to be that way. And we believe that life's moments are connected to each other. You believe that you have a past. You believe that you're living in a continuum. So your experience or your belief of your experience is that you're in your mind, your past is a big story. You carry it with you preciously and you suffer from it most of your life because the past 
gets collected in this garbage bag. And we keep carrying this garbage bag with us, and the garbage bag gets heavier and heavier. And we like to stop every once in a while and dig into our garbage bag and find some rotten food, and we eat that food. So every once in a while you stop, you put your garbage bag down, you open it, and you start digging inside of it, and you find a rotten piece of salmon from four weeks ago. And there's maggots on it, and it's already rottening, and you eat it. And then you feel like shit. And you puke, and you get sick, and you feel really bad, and you hate it. Well, if you don't want to feel like shit, stop digging into the past and eating rotten food. Don't go to your past. Stay here in presence. Eat fresh food. Eat fresh. Don't eat rotten food means stay here, be here in this moment, don't go anywhere else. And if you go in the future, it's the same story, you're still in your past. Because future, basically, it's a projection of the mind, projecting a past experience into the future. There's no such a thing as future. It just doesn't exist. It's a non-existing element that we either fear, worry about it, or we dwell in it. But basically, that's happening in our past. We're bringing the past to the future. Because whatever you're worried and you fear from, or dwell on, or you're imagining, it's a product of your mind that coming from a past experience, a story from the past, that you're projecting it in here and now into an imaginary moment in the future. That's how it is. Because the moments in this life happen so quickly and they're so close to each other. The moments of life are not horizontal. They're not happening. You're not in a continuum from the past to the present to the future. You're not running into a linear line. The moments, each moment is an independent moment. Every moment is an independent moment that happens only one time. So this is one, one moment, the next moment, the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. They're next to each other like that. Each moment happens and it's over. And then the next, the next, the next. But they're not connected. They're not attached to each other. There's a little gap in between the moments. But since the moment's happening very quickly, it's very, very fast, one happens after the other, it creates the illusion of continuity. It looks like you are moving through it. It's just like the reel in the movie theater, they're using reels. These real is, that's why they call it movies. They call it movies because the real, all these, the, the, when you're watching a movie, basically, it's a series of photographs. So they have photographed a person. So this is one photo, another photo, another photo, another photo, another photo, another photo, another photo. Another photo. And since they're very close to each other, and when you're moving it, it looks like the person is moving. So they have taken 100,000 photographs, and these photographs 
when you start moving it, it creates the illusion that the person is moving. That's how movies, that's why they call it the movie. Yes, Karen. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, I want, I want to ask, you know, today I talked to a friend uh, on the phone and we haven't been talking for many, many years, right? And then she asked me, yeah, what have happened in your life, right? And then I tell her about different moments, right? And I tell her about, uh, yeah, happy moments and difficult moments. But it, 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 for me, it didn't feel like I was eating rotten food. I was just telling about this uh, pictures, right? right? So it, it doesn't create an anxiety or it doesn't make me dwelling or anything like that. Okay. Are you asking me a question or you're just sharing your thoughts with me? No, uh, I'm asking a question. Okay. What, it, it, what is your question? Yeah, the question is that because you say don't go to the past, right? It is like right. eating rotten food. Yes. But my experience is that when I tell her about these moments, right, it doesn't feel like eating rotten food. But do, do you mean that it's rotten food anyhow? Okay, I'll get into that. That's a good question. Let me, let me finish what I was saying and then we'll talk about it, okay? Yeah. So, that's a good one. We're going to talk about this because this is what most people on the planet are struggling with. So, and most people are suffering because of this. So, hopefully by the end of today, I will put some light on it and help you to eradicate the source of your suffering for good. If you're attentive to it. So the bottom line is that every single moment in life is independent and is not connected to the previous moment or the future moment. It only happens one time. So where is a minute ago? Can anybody bring a minute ago here right now? Where is two seconds ago? Five seconds ago? Where did it go? If 10, 15 seconds ago, Karen and I were talking. Where did it go? Can anybody recreate it? Yes, right now we're recording it here on our system so we can watch it again. But if you're not recording it on, on a device, which you can do it with your life because you can't record every moment of your life. It's impossible. Um, where do they go? What happens to them? So the moments of life, after you go through it, then you are, they're only in your memory. You only remember them when you refer to them and your memory as you get older, we all know gets worse. And it's not working as good as it used to. So you don't even remember a lot of the stuff. So they disappear into the vastness of universe for good. When they make movies, the movie, the real, they making the real, it's a combination, a collection of snapshots of every snapshot attached to the other one. Back in the day, 60, 70 years ago, when they played the movies and they didn't have an electrical engine to run it, so there was no motor, so you've seen it in the movie uh, Cinema Paradiso. There's a, it's an Italian movie and there's little, this little Italian kid, seven year old one is turning the handle of this 
reel is turning, so he has to keep his hands steady. So you got the movie watching. That's why they call it movies. Because it's moving. What's moving? A series of snapshots of pictures moving after each other and they create the illusion that someone is alive and somebody's the actor and the actress they're talking to each other they're dancing with each other they're kissing each other or whatever it's happening same identical thing is happening in life the moments of life are not attached to each other if they were attached to each other you could go back into them or go forward but you can't go back and you can't go forward because they're not attached there's a gap in between the two moments every moment is independent it only happens once and then it's gone then the next moment happens and it's gone then the next moment happens and it's gone forever because it's a vertical moment so they're next to each other very closely but since they happen so fast so quickly it is an optical illusion to get the feel that these moments are connected to each other and it creates the illusion of continu continuity that it is in a continuum but it's not every moment is fresh every moment in life is only happened one time only one time and it's gone forever there is no record of it you can't go back to it it's finished it only happens that means that your life is fresh that means every moment of your life is absolutely brand new even though you've been sleeping in your bed your house your apartment for 10 15 20 years 30 years you are with the same partner for 20 years you have the same dog for 15 years you go to the same bakery every morning to get your coffee and your croissant or bread or whatever but and it's all you may tell yourself those of you who are bored you don't like your life you think things are boring slow and you tell yourself it's the same shit happening over and over again it's so boring it's so continuously the same thing happening but it's not every single moment is brand new absolutely brand new as if it's never happened before everything is fresh every single moment in life once you begin to shift your consciousness and you begin to see it and recognize it you will know that there's not a single moment in your life that is being repeated there may be a similar one it looks like it but it's not the same it's brand new so then what happens why why do we suffer how many people here suffering from your past how many of you go into this thing in your head and what they call it is again excuse my language but this is the easiest way of explaining it mind fucking how many people mind fuck with themselves going in your past and blaming yourself and thinking about all these things I should have done this I should have done that but I screwed up but I was an asshole 
I let go of my children, I chased away my husband, I wasn't a good mom, blah, 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 blah. If I invested my money correctly, I would have been in a better place. If I went to medical school, I would have been in a much better place, but I missed, I instead of going to medical school, I met this guitar player, rock star, and I jumped in a plane and I went to Bali. I left my kids and my husband and I went to Bali and India and Asia and for a few years I rock and roll with this guy. And now I suffer. How many people have done that? How many people talk about it? How many people suffer from their past mistakes? They believe, they made mistakes, they did something wrong. And they keep going back to that story. How many times you run into a friend or a lover or partner and you keep blaming them over the same thing? You keep complaining over the same thing. You did this, you did that. There's some people here, they get stuck on one thing and they can't free themselves. I'm, I, I have been around them. I am around them. And their mind is stuck on something and they can't get over it. They always have to bring it up. They always have to bring that into the relationship, in your connection. Or they bring their shit from old connections, old relationships to new friendships and new love affairs. How many times you've done that? Do you know what they call it? They call it bringing your baggage with you into your new marriage, into your new relationship. So you tell somebody, I met this lady, I really like this woman and I want to be with her and start a new life. And your friends say, oh, is she married? Has she got kids? Oh yeah. Oh, she's going to bring her baggages with her into your, in this new relationship. That's what people tell each other. Or he's going to bring his baggages of old marriages and the kids and everything into the new relationship and how many times you've seen that happen just be honest with me I'm not here I'm not judging you I'm not here to tell you you did this wrong you did that wrong it's not my job to tell you these things you only know what you've done I'm just referring to you these points I want you to understand these things so you can free yourself from it. That a big part of your suffering or human suffering, a big portion of it is the fact that as we get older, this garbage bag, which is old memories and old stories and old stuff and a lot of regrets and blames that they're all been collected in this garbage bag, the garbage bag is getting heavier. Do you know why people as they get older, why their, their, their back starts to bend and they get crooked? It's not really because they're getting old and they're u losing the density of their bones. It's because of the garbage bag they're carrying of their past stuff. Stuff. It's just stuff. You see couples fighting with each other 
and immediately everything goes back into the past. Yeah, you did this and you did that. No, you did this or you did that, but you, da -da 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 -da, and you, blah, blah, blah. It all goes into pointing finger at each other and blaming each other of what? Of the past. And it poisons the relationship. And A, that's an unhealthy relationship. B, it's not going to go anywhere. It's destined to be a disaster. And so this is how we live our lives. And my point is to bring awareness to this, to make you understand this. To become aware. A, none of these moments are attached to each other. Every single moment in life is fresh. If they were attached to each other, that means you could go back into the past or you can go to the future. But you can't because the moments are not attached to each other. You know, you ever go watch these buildings downtown or somewhere and they look like they're attached. The buildings are attached to each other, but none of these buildings are attached to each other. There's a little gap in between them. There's a tiny, tiny bit gap in between the two buildings. The same thing with the moments of life. Because it's happening so fast, so quickly, it looks like, you know, this moment, next moment, next moment, next moment. It looks like it's in a continuum and it looks like it's moving and going forward and it's going from one place to another. But that's not it. That's not how it happens. It's only an optical illusion. It appears to be, it is continuous. But it's not. It only looks like it. It sounds like it. It feels like it. But that's not what it is. It's wrong. Your senses are lying to you. Your senses are making a mistake. The moments of life are not attached to each other. They've never been attached to each other. They would never be attached to each other because that's not how it is. They're independent and there's only one moment in life that ever happens and that's now. There is nothing outside of now. There's never been a moment outside of now and there would never be a moment outside of now. Outside of now does not exist. I'm sorry. You're only dwelling in the past in your mind and that's why you're suffering. You go into your garbage bag, that you're carrying it, your past, that it's so important to you, or the past of humanity, history, it's so important to you that you're willing sometimes to kill other people to defend your prejudice. You're willing to fight pe with people. You're willing to cut them off of your life because you're so invested into, the, into your story or your history or the history of your country. The past of your country is so important. You're so proud of it. You read books about it. You write books about it. But you don't even know if it's happened or not. You have no idea if the past, the history of your country is true or not. You don't have a clue at all except what you've read in your books. You weren't here 50, 100 years ago to see what happened. You don't know if that is true or not. They've told you the story and you accepted it. They've written it in a book and you read it and you're proud of it or you're ashamed of it. But you don't have a clue if it happened because you weren't there and nobody else was al is alive from 500 years ago. So you have no one to talk to and check in with except the books.
if you really want to awaken and free yourself, you want to be a free being, you have to wake up into the truth of now. Means you got to examine everything for yourself to see if it's true or not, if it has validity or not, if it's possible or not, if it really happened or not. Instead of blindly accepting whatever they feed you. You got to wake up to examine things. Examination. What about your past? Do you remember what you ate last Wednesday for lunch? Do you remember what you did last Wednesday? I promise you 99.99% .99 you don't remember what you did last week on Wednesday. Unless it was a big significant event. You went on a big job interview or you met somebody you really fell in love with or you broke your arm last Wednesday or your son got sick then you may remember it. The rest you can't remember. What you did last week on Wednesday and what you ate for lunch. It's all gone. You can't remember it. What did you eat for lunch yesterday or two days ago? 99% you don't remember it. It's all gone. So, there, your past that you're so hung up on and you really value it and you really think it's a big deal, most of it you don't even remember. The stuff you remember is where your mind got stuck into it. Whether something bad happened to you and it pushed you into being a victim and now you're playing that tape for yourself, I'm a victim, this happened to me, poor me, blah, blah, blah. And the mind is stuck in that thing and is feeding off of that story. And you suffer from it. Or you use that information and you go in the future and you're creating some kind of story in your head. Whether it's fear, worry, anxiety or whatever. It's some kind of romantic, illusory story of daydreaming or whatever it is. Pay attention. You need to watch yourself. You need to look. Be watchful of what is happening in your mind. What's going on there? Where does it take you? Are you do, I, do you want to go to these places with it? Because I bet you most of your life you haven't paid any attention to it and you've been a victim of your mind. Most humanity, unless you're doing self-work, which I'm sure all of you here are doing self-work, the rest of the humanity is completely unconscious to the mind activity, where the mind takes you, it ta and how we're affected. We're hearing some kind of song, it's a melancholy song, all of a sudden that song takes you to your childhood where you were listening to some music or you had a heartbreak, so the next thing is you're not, you're feeling sad because you heard the song and the list, it goes on and on and on. Awakening means you're completely awake. You are awake in this moment. You're aware of this moment. You're aware of your mental activity and emotional activities. You're aware of your body. You're aware. You're awake. And you're here. Here is the only place that exists. There is no other place. It's not your past life. It's not that you come from planet series or another civilization or another galaxy. 
you come from Andronima, you come from this, you come from that. Okay, all of these sounds great, but you're here. Here is the only place, the only thing that is important. Here, now. The rest is bullshit. Absolutely bullshit. Non-existing. Don't waste your time with anything else because you're just wasting your life walking around being unconscious. That's what is happening. Here, right now, is the only thing that exists. The only thing that is ever going to be is here. And here is fresh and brand new. Means you are brand new. You died in last moment and you were born again right now. And you die again and you're born again. You don't have a past. And you don't have a future. You only have here. So, what do you want to do with here? Do you want to waste here, dwelling in the past, going into your stories? Is that what you want to do? Or fantasizing about another civilization or where you come from or blah, 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 which is great, sounds great, but has nothing to do with now. Now, right now, you're brand new, you're fresh. You're pure intelligence. You're pure divine. You're expanded. Everything that you ever been looking for, any secrets in life, any kind of mystery that you're looking for, love, wholeness, God, secrets, powers, Everything is within yourself, here and now. You carry everything within yourself in this moment. Everything. All you have to do is pause for one moment. Pause, stop. And not look at anybody for anything, including me. I am included in that story. For me to give you anything or do anything for you, all you have to do is stop, look inside yourself and dig inside yourself and you will see everything that you need is already within yourself because you are complete. The reason you feel incomplete, inadequate, lack of love, not accepted, hating yourself, is simply your mind. It's all your thoughts. If you can cut through your thoughts, your wounds are all in your mind. Your past is in your mind. If you can cut through that and go beyond your mind, beyond your story into the presence, the presence of right now, in this moment, and be quiet, suddenly you will see for yourself that you are complete, you're whole, there's nothing missing. You are love. You literally love comes from within yourself. You're the fountain of it. The very source of love is within yourself. It's coming from yourself. It's always been coming from yourself. It never came from anybody else. If you think someone else gave you love, you're in an illusion. Love comes from within yourself. The other person reflected love at you. They reflected love to you. They didn't give you love. So, Karen, let's talk about your story. 
Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So, what you do is you're referring to the past. I'm not talking about not referring to the past. You use the past as a point of reference, of mm -hmm. course. And it would be stupid of me not to use my past experiences and fall into the same ditch that every time in my life I'm falling into it and fall into the same ditch. After five times I fell into this ditch and I got my, my clothes m muddy or oily or broke my ankle and I go back and fall into the same ditch. That's very stupid. So we have our memory, of course. You have your past experiences to derive from. So you use your memory to go to your past and to use that information. So you don't do the same thing, same mistake five times in a row. Or you're referring to what has happened. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that you don't use your past memories for you're good. What I'm referring to is what most people on this planet do. They're constantly living in the past. They're dwelling in the past and they're completely missing out here, right now. I've encountered thousands of people that they're missing the, the beauty of this moment, the love, the joy, the juice of this moment. Because they're so stuck in their head. They're so worried about something or they're constantly... I mean, I have friends, family, relatives I talk to. They're asking me questions. So, Zarathustra, how was it? Did you go to Sedona? And I tell them, yeah, I went to Sedona and I did this and I did that. And they don't hear a word I said. And then five minutes after, so how was your time in Sedona? And I'm like, dude, I just told you what happened in Sedona. Where were you? You weren't listening to me. I have close friends asking me the same question in a matter of 10 minutes, three times. And I want to pick up something and smack it in their head because it makes me upset that you're just not listening to what I say. Who am I talking to? I already told you that. Because it's trendy and it's chic and it's becoming okay. Okay, this is, this is another part. This I want to bring it to your attention. It's becoming okay and normal to not be present and to be stuck with your phone all the time. You know, when was it? It was like a couple of days ago, yesterday or the day before, I, I'm talking to this friend of mine. We're talking, he's asking me questions and he's doing this. And I'm like, put the damn phone away. You're asking me questions and I'm telling you and you're on your phone, then be on your phone, do your thing. I didn't drive all the way here to see you, for you to be on your phone. If you want to be on your phone, then what the hell did you make plans to see me for? I didn't drive one hour to come and see you, for you to be on your phone. Put the phone away. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, put the phone away. Okay, what do you want to know now? You want to know about my trip? I'll tell you about my trip. So we don't even realize that what has happened. And you know, the older people, they're a bit older, they're better. But as you get, go move into younger generation, it's a disaster. It's completely disaster, disastrous, because they can't be present with you and listen to you because they're just playing their devices all the time. And the older people, their problem is they can't let go of their past. They're so stuck into their past. So their past is hunting them all the time.
you have to come back here. If you want awakening, if you want God, if you want love, if you want to be happy, you have to ruthlessly cut out everything outside of here and just learn how to be here, how to be present in this moment. And you get the juice of life, the nectar of life, the love, the, the, the joy of the life is here. It's not in your story that, oh, it was so beautiful before the pandemic, I could go to Spain and we could go to northern Sweden or we can do this or blah, 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 blah. That's not here. It's past. Forget about that. Here, what do you have here? You can enjoy the moments of this moment of life right now because it's full, it's complete, it's whole, it's rich. There is so much in this moment. If you pay attention, if you just hang out here, if you're willing to just be here, there's so much in here. It's so fresh. It's all brand new. None of it is old. And then you will see. Anybody has any questions for me? Is that a comment you want to make or is it a question? Uh, Rosalie. I, I'd just like to tell you, you talk about the relationship. Many times when you are in a relationship and it's stuck there and you walk away from there and in the next one, you go into the same again. And the best okay. relationship I have now and I had it for years. That's the one I have now, and that is with myself. Okay. So many times when you go out of one thing, you go into a new thing you think is new, but you go into the exactly the same again. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay, no questions? Nothing? No comments? You can write on the chat box if I don't see you. Uh, some of you are writing your questions to me uh, during the Academy on Facebook or Instagram or you're sending me an email. I can't, while I'm uh, broadcasting on the Academy, I can only uh, communicate via the Zoom. Or, so if you want to have a direct conversation with me, uh, please come to the Zoom and you can sign up through my website and that's the only time I can communicate with you directly. Otherwise, if you're going to write your question to me as an email, I, I will get back to you uh, as long as it's not a long question and it's not too complicated, then I'll write back to you or you can write to me on Facebook. Uh, but sometimes I'm getting these huge, big questions, it would take me literally a day to answer it. So I can't. And I want to communicate with you, but I can't answer those questions. You can ask me those questions verbally. It's easier to me to answer it. But I really do appreciate when you write to me. And uh, 
I don't want to discourage you from writing to me. It's just, it's hard for me to explain uh, some of things that may take a book to explain it. So... Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember if it was the the last academy. Maybe it was the last academy, and then you were talking. Uh, you were talking about something, and then uh, then you say, "Don't be the wounded he healer." You said, right? Uh huh. And when you said that, I I kind of uh, it's it was like a little bit like I froze. So I, right. I didn't really hear what you said. Uh, right. And then I was listening uh, to the to the recording, but I. I okay. I didn't. I didn't. Right. Find so you you, you want to know what I'm referring to? Yeah. What What do okay. you mean with that? Uh, as the wounded healer. Yeah, I've heard about yeah. the wounded right. healer, but I right. want to hear why you think that don't be the wounded healer. What What do you mean? Right. What I'm referring to is that, and I've been there and I've done that, okay? So this is again coming from direct experience because I, I was a wounded healer myself. So, and that's happening a lot these days. So if you go on Facebook, Instagram, you're going to see a large number of people that are life coaches, their healers, their guides, their teaching, but their healing. But majority of these people, which I include myself, I used to be one of them, they haven't put the body of work on working on themselves. So they're wounded. They do healing work, they're life coaching, but most of the time when they're teaching things, they don't practice it themselves. The stuff they teach to other people, they need to practice it themselves, and they haven't. So there's a lot of emotional baggages or wounds that they carry, and, and they... And the thing about this is that a lot of us want to cover things up unconsciously. And I had like hundreds, if not thousands, of people come to me telling me, Oh, Zarathustra, I want to be a healer because I want to help other people and I want to be like you and... And uh, I want this to be my career and I want to make a living from it. And this is all I want to do is help other people. But then when I get to know them a little bit more, I'm asking them questions. I can see like they got chi a lot of childhood issues. They got a lot of sexual hangups. They got a lot of ideas about concepts of how things should be. So there's a lot of work they haven't done on themselves. So in so many areas, they're wounded. And now they want to run around and teach other people how to, to be. And I'm not saying they're not helping other people because even though I operated as a wounded healer, I still helped a lot of people. But you are much more effective than when you have come to wholeness yourself when you have worked on yourself and you have cleared a lot of your own stuff and now you can teach the areas that you have conquered on yourself teaching it to other people it's very easy to go out there and tell other people what to do oh you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that blah 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 but it's another thing is if you can demonstrate it that you have done it yourself. And now if you have been able to accomplish it and you're teaching it, now your teaching comes from a direct experience. It's coming from the source and it's very powerful. That's what I'm referring to. I have 
several life coach friends. They're successful. Some of them are in TV. They're very, very good in teaching what they're teaching. From diet, from life coaching, from relationship coaching. But their own lives is totally a mess. It's a complete mess. Everything they're teaching, it's coming from this abusive place. Either they're abusing their partners or their employees, or they have this deep emotional wounds that they're operating from that place. They're very good in teaching, but they're not really living it themselves. And I know them personally. But back to the subject that I started, the topic that I started talking about is you come back here in this moment. Here. You come back here. And if you're here, and you learn how to be here, then your mind settles down. Then you dive into the mind, collapses into the heart. It falls into the heart of awareness. When you're here, you're present. You can examine it. And even if you have a busy mind, there's a lot of thoughts in your head, if you're present and you're attentive to your mind, then thoughts disappear. For example, right now, you can look in there, take a look inside, just be attentive. Simply exercise your natural state. And you're here, and you take a look. You look inside your mind. The moment you're aware, and you're awake, and you're t paying attention, then all of a sudden there is no mind, there is no thoughts. And then once you get in the practice of being here, you don't have to really do anything, you just are attentive, you're looking, they call it mindfulness. I mean mindfulness is just a horrible name for silence but you are paying attention take, take a look I'm not talking about changing your thoughts I'm not talking about positive visual visualization positive thinking I don't teach that you know those of you who've been with me you know that I'm talking about those of you who who, who are new I don't teach positive visualization. I don't teach positive thinking. Positive thinking, negative thinking, to me it's the same crap. It's all thinking. I teach no thinking, silence, be quiet, no thoughts. However, these are tools that I'm sharing with you because I suffered from it myself. I've gone, I had a very, very busy mind. I couldn't even be in a relationship with a woman because of my mind. You know, I couldn't even be present because it was so fast, so full, so busy. It was always everywhere. And it took a number of years till I recognize things and then gradually, gradually, gradually throughout the years the mind became more quiet, more quiet. And then finally there was a moment that I was able the mind started to turn inwards and my attention went to the Atman and I saw myself. But it took a num a very long period of time to get to that point. However, I didn't have the training that you have. 
nobody really taught me or sat with me or spent a couple of hours with me to teach me what to do. I sat with different masters and teachers. They were speaking. It was general speaking, but it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one coaching that somebody really teaches me how I can go beyond my mind. I had to learn these things on my own and it took 30 years and I suffered in that period of time. There was a lot of suffering happen. Thank God I'm grateful to the grace of God and I'm not taking this as a personal accomplishment. It was through grace of God that I got to this place. And now there could be like five hours a day, four hours a day, three hours, ten hours a day may go by and there's no thoughts. There's nothing. It's absolutely quiet. And then a thought may come after three hours. Oh, it's been very quiet. Now a thought comes. All of a sudden you notice you haven't been thinking for a few hours. And then when the mind starts to go in the past, somebody tells you something, somebody triggers you, somebody insults you, and then the mind gets activated and the mind goes, what, what, does, what did he mean by he said this thing? Or what did she mean by what she said? Because I can see it. The mind gets activated and it goes in the past. But immediately it gets identified. Immediately, the moment it goes there, all of a sudden it's like, ah, why am I starting to feel bad? Why, why I feel all of a sudden weird? And immediately I realized that I have gone into a past story or I have gone into a future story because somebody said something and it triggered the mind and the mind is going into this story. So the moment I, the moment I see its ugly head and then phew, you're back here. And the moment you just come back here, Examine it for yourself right now. Here. Check it out. Don't take my word. Look inside right now. Here. Is there anything going on? Is there a story? What's happening to you right now? Here. And if you look. Here. There is nothing going on. There is no thoughts. There is no story. There is nothing here. Here is always fresh. Only when you get out of here, you get into trouble. So stay here. Since you don't have anywhere else to go. Because there is no other place. All of these other stuff, other civilizations, other dimensions, other stuff, none of them are possible for you, my dear. You can't go to these higher realms of consciousness or civilizations because you don't know how to be here. You have to be here first. If you don't know how here is, Forget about another place. That other place will not manifest itself because you haven't mastered here. You have to master here right now. You have to come to the mastery of here and now. Otherwise, all of it are concepts. They're just conceptual thinking. They're ideas. They're stories. They're non-existing. It's a cop-out. Is your mind is playing a trick on you. That's where I say you need to be really honest and ruthless with yourself on your spirituality. You have to be selfish, honest, and ruthless with yourself. But you have to be selfish first. Forget about going out there helping other people. 
They don't need your help. You need your help. Help yourself. You get straight. You take care of yourself. You find peace within yourself. We need you to find peace within yourself so you can help humanity. If you don't find inner peace, you're, you're worthless. You're literally worthless because you'll be another one of these 7 billion people who are running around banging their head against the wall and they get emotional and you can manipulate them, send them to the war and you can manipulate them putting masks on their face and you can manipulate them to go kill each other and get upset over um, whatever. We don't need you. You want to be helpful, you have to find inner peace. You have to come to silence. You have to come to love. You got to find love inside yourself. You have to love yourself. Don't come and preach to me about love if you don't love yourself because you don't know anything. You have to love and accept yourself the way you are. Really love yourself for being a divine expression. If you don't know how to do that, then you're worthless. You're a robot. You're a product. It's easy to dress you up in, in army clothes and send you out there and kill other people or walk on the mine and come back disabled. Because you don't know how to love yourself. You don't accept yourself. You're in the past or in the future. You don't worth anything. If you want to be worthy to God and be God's co-creator or help humanity, you have to work on yourself. You have to come to silence. You have to discover who you are. You have to discover how beautiful you are here. In the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of the war, in the middle of whatever it is, you have to discover the beauty within yourself then you're worthy. Then you can help. Otherwise, you're a robot. You, you become a product. That's all you are. And we don't want that. We want freedom. This is the time. This is the place. Look at it. They put a mask on your face. They force you to cover your mouth. Means what? Means shut up. Don't speak. Be quiet. I'm not talking about don't speak your rights. I'm not talking about don't tell your partner your truth. I'm talking about learn to be quiet. Learn silence. Learn to be meditative. Learn to be the Buddha. Be quiet. Don't blah, blah, blah. Don't go into your past. Don't entertain your past. Be quiet. If your mind goes to the past, be quiet. If you're worried about future, again, your mind is blah, blah, blah. Be quiet. Be here. Be the Buddha. Be in the heart. Feel the love that is around you. Recognize your own divinity. Recognize who you are. Recognize how beautiful you are. If I don't know you and I see you and I love you, you surely can love yourself. Because I do love you. That's why I do what I do. Because of the love I have in my heart. And I want you to recognize your own beauty. I don't care about your physical look or your shape. That's not where I'm talking about. You're old, you're young, you're big, you're fat, you're skinny, you're educated, you're not educated. You got money, you don't. I don't care about that. That's not what I care for. I don't care what sign you are. I don't care 
what civilization you come from. I don't, I don't care about any of these things. They're meaningless to me. I care about your heart, your beauty, the love you have inside yourself. I want you to see that. I want you to know who you are. And you can't do that as long as you carry this garbage bag and you're living in your past. And you're worried all the time what's going to happen to you. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. Eventually, you will die. That's what's going to happen to you. So don't worry about it. One of these days, you will die if you're really worried about it. The body is going to terminate. That's what's going to happen to you. Whether in the next minute or next 50 years. So that's your destiny. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Can you be here now? Can you be with me? Can you dive into love? Can you recognize your beauty? Because your time's very, very short. You only have a few more minutes to live. Can you do that right now? Can you live like that? Can you meet me in unified field of love? Here, now, without your story, without where you come from, without all your stuff. Can you walk with me hand in hand? Can you hug me? Can you give me a kiss? Can you love me? Can you be my lover? Can you fly with me in this moment? right now but I want you to love yourself first and accept yourself because you represent you're here for a very very important mission this is your mission on this planet that's why you came here you didn't come here to breathe the air and eat the food and pollute things you're here on a mission can you wake up to your mission and live what you came to this planet for Can you be the true love that you are and love yourself? Accept yourself. See how beautiful you are when you look in the mirror. Forget about your physical looks. Can you see your heart? Can you see the love you carry, the power you have? Because we need your help. This is the time that you merge into this place and emanate the love vibration but not superficial, not phony, holy. We don't need another holy, phony, phony, holy person run around Facebook putting all these videos we need you to come to recognize the beauty of yourself and love yourself and see that you carry God inside yourself and to recognize that, to be that, to live that in this moment. That's what we need. And then you will see together in that vibration nothing can resist it more and more people will fall in love the power of that love takes over the entire planet it will transform anything that touches you have that power but you got to get over your self judgments self blame because they're all happening in your mind and dive into the heart of awareness and see how beautiful you are. See what a loving creature you are. And to do that, you have to go beyond the mind. You gotta let this baby go. 
Okay? Give me a thumbs up. Are you with me? Are you here? Okay. Good. I love you very much. I appreciate your presence. Thank you for coming to my life. I'm grateful to serve you, to be with you. You are the light of my life. It's really because of this, I feel motivated to get up in the mornings, shave, shower, get myself ready, get the studio ready, do, and do the work. Sometimes I don't feel like doing it. I'm lazy, I'm tired, or whatever, or I went out at night late, or whatever, and I don't feel like it. But I feel your love. And I want, I want to do this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your emails, your comments, or your criticism. I, I welcome all of it. After we finish, I want you to go in the mirror, go to the bathroom, look in the mirror, look into your, your, the mirror, and I want you to say, with Mickey Mouse language, say to yourself, while you're staring into each, your, your own eyes, say, I love myself. I love myself. Mickey Mouse language. Do that every morning and tell me if you're going to be depressed. If you get afraid of something, fear comes for you. Just look in the mirror, look into your own eyes and say, I love myself. I forgive myself. I love everybody and I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Remember who you are. Come to your power. Because you're needless. You don't need anything. Because everything you need is inside yourself. And that comes from your power of love. We've come to the end of our academy. I, want, I would like to thank you for joining me. Um, there won't be an academy next Wednesday because I'm going on a camping trip. So I'm very, very excited about my, my journey. Um, but then the following week we'll have the academy. I think the following week the date is going to be, I'm going to tell you the date right now. And you can also check out my, uh, my, the website on the calendar part of the website. It tells you what we're doing. The next academy is going to be August the 12th, inshallah, God willing, you know, if I am still alive and I'm still here, we'll do it. I like this Arabic word, inshallah. Of course, I, I come from Iran originally, so we have a lot of Arabic words that permeated into the language. But inshallah is one of the ones I love, I like, because, you know, with, with the will of God, inshallah. If God wills it. Um, regarding future events. At uh, the moment, I haven't scheduled any kind of uh, paid events. I am going to do a, uh, a world, um, a free online self-awakening uh, global workshop. And that's going to be the beginning of October. And it's going to be an eight-day uh, workshop. So that I'm going to offer it. It's, again, it's a free event. So, and then we're going to record it and, and uh, put the recordings on my website. That's going to be in October. In the meantime, uh, I will be taking, I have room to take two students 
for my life training uh, program. That's my private coaching, my VIP program. It's a three-month program. We meet 12 sessions. Each session is an hour and a half. And I'll make a tailor-made design program for your spiritual development. If you have more questions about it, just send me an email and uh, we'll make a consultation appointment with you and you and I will talk for 45 minutes and I explain to you how the program works and, and, and uh, you can ask me your questions and I'll tell you how much it costs and then uh, we go on from there. I, will be, I won't take any students until uh, mid-August towards the end of the August. But if you're interested, reach out and send me an email. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. Info at zaratustra.tv. And my website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, the recording of this session will be mailed to you in a week. We also put it on YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is Zaratustra 5D. That's the name of my YouTube channel. So if you want to go on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, and you will have access to about six or 700 videos. They're from healing videos to educational videos. Same as my uh, Facebook and Instagram pages. They're all the same. Zaratustra 5D. I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Sending you lots of love and light. I hope you have a wonderful time. God bless you. I love you. And look forward to connecting with you again. And thank you for being in my life. Namaste. Oh, I just remember one thing. Um, all of our, the six sessions that we had at our uh, online global uh, self-awakening workshop, all of the videos are, are posted on my website under the media section. And we also have three um, meditations that are posted there guided meditation. So if you go to zaratustra.tv, click on the media section and those videos and meditations are, are there and you can watch them at your convenience. <laughs>